So if you manage groups in Active Directory, you know how important it is to actually keep track of the members of each of those groups, right? So I wanted to go over how to use PowerShell to build a monitor for tracking changes to group memberships in Active Directory. So the first thing I got here is the group that I'll be using as my test group is just domain users. Pretty simple. All users are members of domain users unless you specify them not to be. To look at the current memberships of that group, use the get 80 group member commandlet. And I'm also piping that to format table here. And so you can see that we've got quite a few members of that group. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those memberships and make a custom object here, line 18, called current memberships. And then for each member that's in that group, I'm going to add a new entry uh, with the group name and then the member name or the member SAM account name in this case. So if we create this object and then we look at it, you can see that it's, it's the same thing from before, uh, but it's the group name as well as the members. And so then I'm going to export that to a CSV file and specify the path here, line 27 and the 28 X actually doing the export. And then if we look at that file, we should see just the CSV representation of that same data from before. In this case, it's opening a notepad because I don't have any other spreadsheet application on this server. So now that we've stored the data we want to use, now let's uh, take a look at comparing that. So here I'm going to re-import that CSV and assign it to a variable called previous memberships. And then I'm going to remove the membership test user from Active Directory. And so what this will do is it will remove that user from the domain users group. So if we go ahead and remove that user. So doing the current memberships thing again. So this is just the same thing from before building that object. And then we want to check and see if, if anything was removed. So I'm going through the previous membership list. So that see what was in that CSV file and seeing if all of those are in the current memberships. And if they aren't, then we know that the member was removed. So if we run this snippet, we should see the output that yeah, membership test was removed. And then we can do the same thing. So for each member that is currently in it, if that member is not in, so line 59, if that's not in uh, the previous membership, so in the CSV file, then write that it was added. But if we run this, we didn't add any users, so nothing. So if you've watched any of my demos before, and you know that I love reusable functions. And so I've taken this and I've converted it to a compare 80 group memberships function. So and it takes a couple of parameters. First one here is the group names. This is a string array, so you're going to give it a list of group names. The second thing is the CSV path. And the idea behind this function is to set it up as a scheduled task to run over and over and over. And so line 81, I have this, this parameter to specify whether or not you want to remove unused previous groups. And so if you set this to true, any group that's in the CSV file that is not specified in a group names variable, that will be removed. If, it's, if you set this to false, it will leave them in there. And so then the 83 email recipient, if you want to set this up to email results on the line 85, the SMTP server. And for this demo, we don't have an SMTP server in our demo environment. I've commented out where it actually sends the email, but it's in there and I'll show you it. First of all, on line 89, I'm setting the email strength. So this is what will be in the body of the email. And line 90, skipped group memberships. So these are the groups that are in the CC file that are not specified in group names that you want to save. I'll show you that here in a second. And then line 93, this is everything that's in that CSV file. So I'm importing it and assigning it to the all previous memberships variable. And line 96, I'm getting a list of all the group names that are in the all previous memberships. I'm doing that so that I can do this for each loop here on starts on line 99. So for each of those groups that are in a CSV file, if they're group names, so if they're not currently specified when the function is called and remove unused previous groups is set to true, then here on line 104, I'm removing that group from that all previous memberships object. And if remove unused previous groups is set to false, then it will add them to the skipped group memberships object so that it can output it to the CSV file here in a bit. All right. And so then for our process, I'm setting in an overall all current memberships variable so that we can create output for our CSV file. And then for each group specified, if that group is not in the CSV file, so line 118, there's nothing to compare. So we don't need to do any comparison. We just need to grab all the current memberships. So line 121, that, and that for each loop is where we're grabbing all the current memberships. And then there's nothing else for that group. 
but if that group is in the previous groups, and then what we need to do is we need to compare it. So here line 130, this is the same current memberships building that object from before. So the same thing we saw before we got to the function. And line 137, and we're loading all the previous memberships for just that group. So because remember, we've got multiple groups. We want to look at the ones just for that group. And then lines 140 to 144, we're checking to see if anything was removed. And then line 148 to 153, we're checking to see if anything was added. So these are the same thing from before. But you notice I'm doing a right verbose instead of right host. I'm also building this email string. So for each of these, I'm just adding an entry to that email. And then here at the end, I'm building that all current memberships by adding that current memberships. So the current memberships will hold memberships for each group. And then all current memberships for all groups because I'm adding them in for each time through the for each loop. And then here at the end, this is where the email happens. So if there is data in the email string, I'm going to build a splat. So set up my SMTP server, my from address. And the from address here, I'm building from the user that is running the script. I'm building it from that user's email address. And then I'm sending it to the email recipient. The body is that email string that you saw before. And then the subject is just AD group monitoring report. And line 169, this is currently commented out. If you are going to be sending emails, you want this not commented out. And then line 171 here, I'm actually writing host with that email string instead of verbose. It just looks a little nicer with write host. But you want to comment this out if you're going to be doing the send mail message. I'm just having it here so we can see what it would look like. And so if we're not removing unused previous groups, you can see here that I'm adding in the skip group memberships to the all current memberships and then taking all current memberships here, line 175, and exporting it to the CSV path. Let's take this function and add it to our session. And then I'm going to step over to this other PowerShell script file. This is how you would format it if you were going to run it as a scheduled task. So we've got our function that we wrote. You can see up there, line one, it's, I, just, I just have it collapsed. So it's the same thing from before, it just, it just collapsed. And then we've got our compare splat. Uh, this is the splat of the, the settings we're going to use. So for the group names, I'm using domain users and domain admins because I wanted to, to have multiple groups here for a demonstration. And then CSV path, same before before. Email recipient, I've just thrown in some garbage data for email recipient and SMTP server. We're not demonstrating those specifically, but that's what you would do to add them. And then here line 119, compare 80 group memberships. And I've got my splat, and I'm also specifying a dash verbose. If you are going to be running this as a scheduled task, the verbose option is not necessary. I'm just doing it here for demonstration purposes. So if we run this, you could see that it was comparing memberships for domain users, and it found that membership test was removed. And that's because we didn't actually save the CSV file the first time we did the compare. And there wasn't any historical data for domain admins, because it's a new one. And then at the end there, membership test was removed from domain users. So that's what would be sent in the email. And it's, it's not fancy. I'm not doing any special HTML. Uh, you can, of course, do that if you want. Here, I'm going to do a couple of the things so that we can create a new user, add it to the domain admins group so we can see what that looks like. All right, so now we've got a user that's been added to the domain users group and the domain admins group. So if we run this line again, you can see that we are comparing memberships to, for domain users, membership test was added, domain admins, membership test was added, and then the email would be those last two lines, membership test was added. Now you can see I got a typo. I'll go back and fix that before I upload it. But membership test was add to domain users and membership test was add to domain admins. So that is how you use PowerShell to build a group membership monitor for your Active Directory groups.